Hello and welcome back to the channel and I'm up in the loft and I was going to have a bit of an 8F running session after last week. I really enjoyed running that 8F out of the Hornby 00 set over there. So I looked a couple out and here they are. This is quite a nice looking loco. Let me just show you. Wren and it's an LMS version of the 8F and I have tested that. That runs beautifully but I got this slightly older Wren model out one I've not really used before, came to me second hand, slightly worn, but it's running really badly. So I thought, well, I'll tell you what might be quite nice. This video, if I show you through how I'm going to take the motor out of this loco and hopefully bring it back into a little bit better of an operating condition. Now, I've printed out a Hornby 00 service sheet here. We can look back to this if we need lots of bits. Please forgive the blackness on the hands, bit of a printer ink issue. Always when you want to use your printer it seems to need a bit of attention and um, yeah the ink got all over me but never mind. So I did get this printed out. So what am I going to be using? I've got that Ronald Dodd remagnetizer, a great tool. Uh, just a normal 30 or 40 amp soldering iron. And then over here just bench tools. A 3 8 spanner there to undo the bearing nut and then just some pliers and general screwdrivers, odds and ends, a couple of different pairs of glasses depending on what I can't see, slightly thicker oil for when we put it back together, a bit of white grease for the bearings and in here there's a little bit of alcohol for cleaning purposes just in case there's oil all over the commutator or something. And you might see these powerful magnets. Well, I kind of use those for getting the ball bearings out of the, there's little ball bearings sunk right deep down in the brass bearings and you can entice them out with these powerful magnets. Now, sometimes I've found that the trouble can be the bearings actually missing the ball. So it'll be interesting to see in this excellent 8F whether someone's been in there and lost one of the bearings. Right, I need to get this apart then. So I'm going to put the camera up on to a solid mountain and hopefully you'll get to see the whole process and if I'm lucky it'll be running a little bit better at the end of the video than it was when I tested it. So let's get started. Okay well I really like these cutting mats they're good things to work on and uh, I'm just going to try and get the loco out of the box and the first thing I want to do is get to the motor so there is a screw down here and I can see already that it's it's got the look of a screw that's been undone a few times so slightly bird wrong size screwdriver maybe and let's get the tender off now on the Hornby 00 version the tender had a set of pickups in it you can actually see the holes in the chassis where the pickups would have gone and then a wire to the motor now that's moved away now i think before i take the body off i'm just going to see whether this motor retaining screw is loose but it's not so i'm just going to loosen it nicely so i know that'll come undone and oh, there's a coupling there that must have possibly fallen off the tender it has so that will be a job too so let's look about getting the body off We've got two screws at the back here. Just going to try and carefully undo those. I, know, I hope I'm not fiddling around too much. I want to keep everything in camera shot. Now, it's great to have something to put screws in. Now, just a little pot. Just stop things rolling off onto the floor. Right. So we've got two countersunk screws holding the back and then if I turn it over you should see we've got a screw down the chimney and look at that paint loss there. A few attempts at undoing that in the past by the look of things so we're going to take that out. A lovely long screw right now that should enable the body to come off. 
So we've got the body off, put that to one side. I can get rid of this, get rid of this now, the foam. Let's take a look at the chassis. Okay, well, big motors, these ring fields. And there's the pickup wire. And it goes all the way through. I think there's a suppressor there. Solder. <coughs> Please excuse me, cough. Um, so what do you think the best thing is there? It'd be good to disconnect that wire, really. But I might, I might disconnect it at the pickup, actually. Let's have a look. Now you can see there's a bit of white grease on there. I attempted to lubricate this and get it going. But it wasn't very good. Right, so very rudimentary, the pickups on these. You'll see if I take the plate off that the wire is just soldered to the pickup. So I need a bit more wire through, really. There's plenty here. Let's thread it through. There. Okay, so I'm going to unsolder that now. Just a little bit more equipment, a little bit more equipment required. Now, sometimes when you're unsoldering old solder, it can be a good idea just to put a small amount of flux. There we go. Right now, hopefully my soldering iron is nice and warm. So let's just see how this comes undone. All right, now it's plain to see that the wire has been wrapped around the pickup. So I have to try and, well, there, it's off, isn't it? Slid off the end, nothing like something a little bit easier. Right, I'm gonna put the pickup safely in there hopefully unthread the wire and i think the motor might be free now so let's have a look now one thing to watch if you're doing these ren motors or hormy double o is that sometimes they put a shim underneath the motor to if if the worm's a little bit tight on the gear wheel right so that's the other part of the pickup there's the screw let's have a look you can see lots of oil I don't know whether that's in the camera, I hope it is. And the chassis, look at that, that's not sticking. We can see that there's there's no problem with the valve gear or the actual axles, so that's a good thing. And here is the ring field motor. Let's have a look. Well, I can just, what I'm doing now is I'm just attempting to rock the armature backwards and forwards to check for end float. Now it probably doesn't show on the camera but there is a nice bit of end float so it's not tight. There's no shim. There's a mark on the magnet there which could indicate north. Why don't we get the compass? And indeed the red needle on the compass is pointing towards the bottom of the motor where the paint mark is. So when we remagnetize that, we know we've got north at the paint mark. All right, well, I guess we ought to take the brushes out next. I'm just going to unhook this first brush spring just to the side and let's see, will it tip out? Yeah, and look at that, a good long brush. Let me just use my finger, see what? A little bit sticky and oily, not great, but plenty of life on the brush. Good to see. Okay, so I'm going to unhook the other one. I'm just going to store, rather than take the brush springs out, I'm just going to store them on the other side of the brush holder and then they won't fly away. So let's get this other brush out. Stuck. Oh, it's come out a little bit. Let me just go. Yeah, it could be just carbon, but it does feel slightly oily. Right, now maybe I should have done this before I took it out of the loco, but I'm just going to use this rusty old 3.8 spanner, snug fit on that nut, just, yeah, 
undo the nut just a little bit because we'll be wanting to adjust the end float once the motor's been cleaned. So we know that nut now moves. Let's just see if the bearing's free. Bearing's free. So that leaves us with these four screws. So let's just take a quick look at the drawing. Now, here you should see, I'm gonna remove this end. Now there's two different types of armature length. There are a couple of versions of these motors, so you need to be careful if you're going to try and swap parts. That's the brush there. Okay. So first thing to do now is think about undoing these screws. So I'm going to undo them. Now, the only thing that might happen is, unfortunately, the brush spring is indeed impeding the screw. So I'm going to have to take these springs off. Now, when you release the tension, I'm going to just show you. I'm going to put that there because these are indeed handed. And if you're not careful, a lot of energy in these springs, they can go ever such a long way. So, yeah, I'm going to put the smaller part of the coil at the bottom. So you can see now that these springs are not interchangeable. OK, in the pot. Right. Should have access now to all the screws. Now I'm going to be a bit mindful because, as I mentioned before, we've got little ball bearings hiding away in here. Oops, that one uh, nearly escaped me. And it'd be a shame to lose them if they're present. So I'm going to try and be a little bit careful. going to get a small pair of pliers to get that because I just can't quite get it with my fingers. Okay and I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to undo this end bearing and just take it out and let's uh, see whether I think the nut's going to come off actually so I'm just going to put the nut to the side. Now, I wonder, is the ball going to be in this bearing or stuck to the end of the armature? Right, I can't quite see down that, so I'm going to get my magnet. Let's see whether we can entice anything out. Right, well, it could very well be stuck in there with... Yeah, I can't see. Oh, yeah, no. There, it's escaped me. Just uh, hopefully you can perhaps see on the magnet. That's the little chap we didn't want to lose. So we know now we've got one of those. He's safely in that pot. I'm going to be washing these bearings out. Okay. Well, the housing's pretty clean. A little bit of brush residue. Let's have a look. Just going to pull the ring field magnet out. That will bring the armature out. Now, there's no ball on the end there, so we'll come back to that in a minute. Okay, so look at this. We've got the end housing, hopefully with a ball in there. In fact, let's see what happens. I'm just going to put the armature to the side magnet to the side am I going to be able to yeah and hopefully you can see the second ball bearing stuck to the magnet so great news we've got all the parts of the motor and now it's a part it's looking pretty good to me I think it's just mainly going to be a little bit of contamination on the commutator there looks pretty grubby doesn't it and you can see that I think the oil has gone down onto that the segments look blocked 
between the sections. A good clean up and re-lube I think will have this going nicely. I wonder, let's feel the magnet. Feels pretty strong, but we've got the magnetizer here. I think we're going to give that a remag as well. Let's go the whole hog. And let's just double check because we don't want to mess up this remagnetizing. So we definitely know that north is the paint spot. Okay, well, I'm ready for a cup of coffee now. My voice is a bit croaky. So we're going to have a break and then we'll come back and start cleaning all these items up. All right, well, what's the best way to clean these items up? Well, we don't want to go too mad. I've got a cotton bud there. I've got a little bit of alcohol in this container that I saved, which I can spray. And I'm just going to spray a little bit onto the commutator now, not too much. And then I'm just going to dry it. Let's just see. There is huge, huge oily residue coming off that. It's already looking a lot better. But let's have a look at the end of the shaft. A little bit scored, but not too bad. You can just see that some dirt must have got in with the lubrication there and caused a bit of scoring. So I think it'll be all right. So I'm just going to put a bit more alcohol on there just so it can soak into the... We've got to be careful not to touch the windings. We'll let that just dry off a bit now. So I've cleaned both bearings. I'll put that just up there. Now, when we come to the end cap, I like to get a little bit of fluid in down each brush hole. And then the old tip, you get a cotton bud or similar type thing, remove quite a bit of the material, and then you've got a great plunger. Look at that, goes in and out of those brush holders beautifully. And look, there's the, the dirt, but it's not too bad, is it? Let's have another go. Happy with that. And then I'll just use another end of that just to go in there and dry out and remove any dust. I mean, you can use compressed air if it's really bad or a paintbrush, but this isn't too bad. So I've removed virtually all the carbon material and the alcohol will evaporate. Just make sure you don't leave any fibres from the cotton bud in the brush holder but that's now going to be super clean happy with that right now when it comes to the bearings a little bit more fiddly probably won't be able to show you fully but i'm just going to put some alcohol down into both of the bearings and then sometimes you just roll up a little bit of kitchen roll or similar into a spike, insert it in and give it a good twist. Yeah, and as you can see, there's even more black coming out. So you might want to do that a few times until you get the bearing. I can see in there now, I can see the bottom, which is an improvement. So until you get the bearing as clean as you can, this is a bit more difficult. Now you can actually take these bearings out, but it's a, a big performance. So I would tend to try and just, I'm wondering if I can do this on the camera very easily, probably not. I'm gonna put my, just get it up into the bearing there and twist it around a bit. I mean, the bottom bearing wasn't too bad at all. So there's sort of the cleaning process now. Hold on to your hats because you might not like this, but uh, here's how I can clean this commutator really nicely. So I'm just going to very gently insert that into a battery drill. Look at that. So I've got my glass fibre brush. Now it's a little bit more difficult trying to show you because I'm holding it, but I'm just going to start it spinning and then just put my glass fibre brush, I'm just gonna get it to the right length, 
without touching the little wires that go to the windings. There we go. That's coming up really nicely. Look at the black coming off that. Can you see that on my brush? I'm just gonna give that a, a clean with some alcohol off camera. Just try and get the worst off. What I do with very, very sharp knife is just cut the glass fiber when it gets too contaminated. Right, let's give it another go. Okay, let's have a look. Obviously you don't want to tighten your chuck down onto the worm, onto the shoulder. Now can you see, look at that commutator, looks lovely. We've just got the segments to deal with on that and the old fashioned little bit of a, a needle or pin, very fine. Got that the wrong way around probably wearing the wrong glasses. So I'm just going to put the pin in, stroke it down. Not too bad. I'm wondering whether the centrifugal force has spun some of that dirt out. There's a little bit come out there, though you can't see it because probably see my fingers are black. Just there. So we'll do the third one. Uh, yep, a little bit more. So time for a bit more alcohol. You could use a very fine artist paintbrush now just to clean out that. I do have one, but not with me just at the moment. So I probably will use that. Let's just give that a little bit of a clean. And let me show you how this commutator is looking now. I'm sure the camera will pick out imperfections, but you can see that's beautiful. Very clean, segments are clean. There are a few scores in it. I mean, we could put it in the lathe and just take the finest skim off, but I don't think that's necessary. The important thing is we don't want any residue of any material on the commutator. So the alcohol is a great way of cleaning them once you've given them a go. Don't use emery paper or anything abrasive like that. The glass fiber cleaning equipment is probably one of the best things. You can use your own method if you have one you prefer. But for me, I find this a really good way of cleaning commutators, quite sympathetic, no residue left to cause any problems and it just uh, makes a good job of it. So that's the bodies, the bearings, and everything cleaned. So why don't we have a go at remagnetizing this? Just give me a second to get the magnetizer into camera. Right, well, here's the machine. Um, I find that it's a good thing sometimes to double check, press the button and, now that did point that way, but just to make sure you know which way north is when you're remagnetizing, and it is actually pointing away from the machine. Now, get the magnet identify the paint spot, put it between the two pieces, just a nice press one, and then let me just see if I can give you a better shot. There we go. One for luck, that's all it needs. Let's pull it out. And uh, move the equipment out of the way right here's our magnet paint spot is just there let's check it is possible to accidentally magnetize these the wrong way um, i'm trying to let's turn the magnet around yes we've still got north where the paint spot is and let's have a look well that jumped up oh yes definitely definitely quite a bit stronger really grabbing the screwdriver a bit more so there is the remagnetized ring field magnet and just to confirm i've got the paint spot down there yep no mistakes 
but it is easy to remedy. If you accidentally do it the wrong way, you can revert the magnet. Right, well, this video is going on a bit longer than I thought. So just my needle there. I think what we'll do now is I will try and get this motor back together. Now it's a complete reversal of the way I took it apart. I don't think I'm going to spend a huge amount of time filming it, but I'll try and show some clips. A couple of tips. I put a little bit of either Vaseline or white grease, just a small amount over the hole, poke the ball in and then we don't lose it. So I do that on both ends, get the armature, the magnet and the end cover on, and then it's time to set the end float. Okay, let's see how we go. Maybe I will try and film this in real time. So I've got a little bit of white grease just there. Let's see whether I can get a very small amount. Now we don't want to cause any trouble with the commutator. But a little bit of grease doesn't hurt, so I'm going to just put a little bit over that hole. Just give it a wipe. There's enough in there now to hold that ball bearing. So I just need to get one of these balls. And is my screwdriver that one isn't magnetized, but I bet this one is because I've used it to test the magnet. So let's have a look. Yeah, look at this. Hopefully you can see I've got the little ball on the end there. I'm going to just put that now into the bearing and then I'm going to push it down. Oh dear. This is the problem with filming. Look at that strong magnet. It's really playing havoc with that screwdriver. So right, I'm going to push that in using the, and I can already feel that spinning really nicely. Perfect. So I've got the ball in the brush end bearing. I need to just get the smallest amount of white grease here. It doesn't matter so much at this gear end because you you won't contaminate too much down here. You know, I've got it all over the bearing and none down the bearing hole. There we go. This white grease is soluble with oil, so let me just clean some of that out. There, very happy with that. Right, where's that other little ball? I can't see it, just we go, there it is. Okay, right, well, take it from me. It's on the end of the screwdriver. And I'm just going to try and introduce it into this hole. It doesn't want to come off the screwdriver, does it? Too much magnetism can sometimes not always be good. Right, well, I do think I've got it in. Well, unfortunately, I had to cut away there because uh, a telephone call took me away from the workshop. You know, I don't know whether you can hear, but it's pouring down with rain, but I'm back. So we're going to have a go, just as I was saying, at getting this back together. So we've got the little ball bearing safely seated inside. And I'm just going to screw now the bearing back into the brush holder. being careful not to cross the threads. I don't know whether I've got a little bit of dirt in here or something, but it doesn't want to go in. There, that's better. Now with alloy, any aluminium, it's very easy to start crossing a thread, so little bit of care and attention. So that's in. And what I'm going to do now is just gently introduce the armature into that bearing. It feels great. Now we've got a little bit of white grease in there. 
But I'm just going to put the smallest amount of oil on, just the smallest amount. Yeah, that's all it needs. Now I think they could be sintered, these bearings, so they might have oil retaining properties. They don't look like brass. Yeah. Just, uh, we're going to think about putting the magnet back on now. So I'm just going to ease that down and hold the armature while I get it over. And you can feel the powerful action. Gosh, this rain, I do hope you can hear me. The powerful action of the magnet trying to pull the armature to the side. Okay. We know we've got the little bearing safely in there, held with grease, so I'm just going to put that over there. Check that I've got the mark at the bottom. And that is indeed the bottom. So, I just need to centralise this bottom bearing. Screwdriver might help. Just going to ease that in. Nearly there. Uh, now have I done this up too much? Let's just back it off a bit because we don't want to have an issue. There's a nice bit of end float there, we'll adjust that. Let's get some screws in. Now the idea of having the thrust bearings, which those little ball bearings are really is to sort of keep the end float to a bit of a minimum. Don't want the armature travelling longitudinally in its motor because it just really isn't necessary. It can add to noise and just sort of impede the efficiency of the motor. So just one more in here now. One. And I'm going to tighten these diagonally, not too much. So, let me just look. Now at the moment there's quite a bit of end float in there. So I'm just going to start adjusting this. Now what you can do is you can just turn it until it, just very gently until it nips. And indeed that's locked. And then we're just going to back it off a fraction. But I'm going to put the lock nut on, just so it's there. Let's pop it down. Okay, so let's back it off, say, an eighth of a turn. Just nip that lock nut down a bit by hand and have a feel. And that spins beautifully, take it from me. I wonder if I can show you... If you can see down, I'm just spinning that armature. That's great, feels lovely. Nice little bit of end float there. Now I've lubricated the top bearing. I'm just going to put a little bit of extra on the bottom one. And then I'm going to put one spot of oil onto the felt pad to keep the top bearing charged. So what we have here now is the actual body of the motor, the armature, the magnet, all back together. Now, when you do lock up this nut, you don't need to do it stupidly tight or anything. Just watch that the actual bearing doesn't turn and you can see it is. So this is a bit difficult for me to do on camera. So I'll get the body of the motor held and then I will just use a screwdriver to stop the bearing turning as I lock down the lock nut. So I can't quite show you that, but it is really important that when you lock down this nut, you make sure this bearing doesn't revolve because you could be tightening up your armature. So I'm gonna do that off camera and then we'll have a little go at putting the brushes and the brush springs in and we'll test it on a 12 volt power source. Now, 
the video is getting a bit longer than I wanted. So I'm going to break it into a couple of segments and I'll bring you an extra video sometime between now and next Wednesday showing it back in the loco and running. But I am going to show you the motor spinning away in a second or two. Let me get that nut tightened and we'll just check over the brushes and then try it. OK, well, I was just thinking about it and I ought to try and show a little bit more. We know that these brush springs are handed. I have fitted those and put them like I did at the start when I just put them over to the side. And I just I try and show you the just the insertion of the brush. So I've chosen a brush there. Just look at that. It's in out again, beautifully free. So I'm putting it in. And I'm just going to adjust the slot of the brush. Easier said than done sometimes. And then I'm going to lift up the spring. And I've got my thumb to stop it slipping. And unfortunately the brush has moved. Oh, there it is. It's clicked in now. So we've got the brush beautifully in its holder and the spring resting in the groove of the brush. So let's try the other side. so much life on these brushes they can go for many many hours possibly as much as 150 200 hours especially if they're clean they wear more obviously if they're slightly contaminated now you can see i've got my grubby index finger just to the side of the brush holder there so that the spring can't escape off the end i'm lifting it with my screwdriver and now it's gone in. Okay, well look. There is the rebuilt motor. And here's some power. So I'm just going to hold the 12 volts onto the wire and touch the screw. And you can hear that that is a way. I've got quite a bit of power on that using a Hornby 00 controller. I'll turn it down to more or less minimum. This is making quite a bit of noise because it's vibrating. That's running beautifully. See if I can turn it down to minimum. Beautiful, right, let's try it in the other direction. That is super smooth. Yeah, absolutely wonderful. Be very interesting to see what this draws on the layout. But there we have my way of reconditioning a Hornby Double or Wren Ringfield motor for the Castle class or 8F. I really enjoy bringing these motors back to life and slightly disappointed this one's slightly noisy but I think that the bearings have had some contamination in them but quite honestly it probably won't be too noisy when it's on the layout and why not let's just see if I can let's just see if I can get this back on the chassis before I end the video. So I'm just going to get a little bit of my white grease here, put it into the worm. I have put a bit on previously, so don't need too much. Let's just pop that over. Fits onto some lugs, so it goes in nicely. Now, one thing you can check, and I will show you, is that when you do this screw up, you can see whether it does indeed need a shim. 
So one final check. So I'm not going to. You don't need to do these screws too tight. So many people over tighten screws. And obviously, it is a pain if they fall out onto the layout. But uh, right. So how do we know if that's not too tight? Well, look. Just looking for a bit of backlash between the gear and the worm. Now, don't confuse this with end float of the armature. That's just backlash between the gears. So there's nothing binding there. Right, so I've got my fingers on there. Let's pop that into the hole of the frame. And let's see how it performs. Now, unfortunately, I need to hold it slightly in a different way because my finger is rubbing on one of the wheels. Yeah. It's very, you know, who would think it was so difficult to hold two wires together, but I am trying to do it on the camera. There we go. Now that is very smooth now. And that's on minimum power. And I can already tell that this is running a huge amount better. Well, I've got a solder on that pickup, which shouldn't be too difficult. I'll probably just check over the valve gear and give the chassis a little oil. Um, let me put that to one side. There is another job I've got to do, which is probably going to take me a little while, unfortunately. I'll just bring it into shot so you can see. There's the tender. The I don't know whether it's been dropped, but the decoupling is deformed and bent. So that needs straightening. And uh, it's been forced off the two small rivets. So I've got a little bit of work to do to get, you can see that's just not going to hold on. I've got to straighten the coupling and then re-rivet that on. So a little bit to do just to get the loco running. So I'm going to do that all off camera. And as I said a little bit earlier, I'm going to see you in a day or two with these 8Fs on the main Triang Super 4 layout, hopefully with some fairly decent freight, tra uh, freight trains behind them. So I'm looking forward to that. I hope you've enjoyed seeing a little bit of uh, work on the workbench. I have received a few emails from people, not so many comments, they tend to come via email about wanting to see more renovation on the workbench. So if that is indeed something you enjoy or like, perhaps you'd let me know in the comments. And yeah, I'll get back to this later this afternoon or this evening and get it back ready for the layout. So until then, thanks for looking at the channel. And until the next video, I'll say goodbye.